So now I want to talk more specifically about how I use this outside in method of reading. Um, it's particularly helpful with books and with articles that are well organized, um, whether by headings or just well organized in terms of having a strong introduction paragraph and strong conclusions, because then you can read the intro, the conclusion, and get a, a good sense of what the author's argument is, where they're coming from. As we've been working on with Hypothesis, um, I also like to annotate uh, as I read. And so when I read digitally, I'll use Hypothesis. But when I read a hard copy book like this one, um, I like to make notes in the margins. So I'll have better pictures of this. But um, you know, here's, here's an example of that. Um, I like to underline, make notes in the margins. Um, I dog ear pages. Some people think that is heresy. That's the way I that's the way I work with reading. Um, also, something I do is I keep a kind of running running notes, larger section of notes in the back of the book. So usually the back of books will have blank pages at the very end. I use those pages to write down some of the questions that I have about the reading. Um, and I use that to take notes on, okay, here it is, here I am going in, I'm reading the introduction. Um, so what is the main thesis? What is the evidence? And I've identified that here at the very beginning of my notes, that on page four and page seven, Baumgartner has a great statement of her thesis, um, which is that the role of enslaved people taking agency to seek freedom is a major cause, contributing factor, to the Civil War. And so when we look at this history of enslaved people escaping to Mexico, it helps us better understand um, the nature of why the Civil War broke out. It also helps us to understand why in the United States there were laws that uh, protected uh, slavery, the right to hold other human beings in bondage, whereas in Mexico by the mid 1800s, there were not. There were actually laws that would free escaped slaves. Um, and that was something that went back to the colonial era. So she stated that thesis, that general argument very well at the beginning. Um, I also found, you know, she talks about the three different narrative threads that she uses in the book. And so I've made note of those uh, as well. And from there, I wrote some questions to myself, you know, so I mentioned in the previous video that I am reading this book, you know, not just because of my interest, but also because I'm working on this Latin American studies across the curriculum project. And so I wrote a question, why this book for that project? And I'm starting to answer that here in my notes, um, really wanting to see, does this book actually get at Latin American studies curriculum the way I had expected it to? Um, I'm also making notes about the ways that she uses terminology, the ways that she cites evidence um, as I go along, so that I can just look back here um, in this shorthand and then go to the page where those specific things, I either asked a question about it or I saw a pretty clear statement of a thesis or a good example of the way that she interrogates evidence um, or where my questions were answered. Um, then in my notes, I jump to the epilogue and I, I do that in the reading as well. So in this particular book, um, the introduction's relatively short, it's the first nine pages. And then the epilogue, um, so hers is called the epilogue rather than having like a conclusion um, chapter because she makes a connection to history that was being done in the 20th century um, to kind of explain what the big takeaways were from her book. Um, so here's, here's our epilogue. Um, what the big takeaways were from the book and what her relationship to that is. Um, Reading those two together, then I have this pretty strong sense of what's coming in the middle section of the book. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I read individual chapters.